this video you're going to learn how to make a professional looking backdrop and we're also going to learn how and why we should scale our object in order to get correct lighting and camera effects. It's going to be relatively quick compared to other videos in this free masterclass, but what you'll learn is very important and must be taken to heart. Why? Well, because lighting makes or breaks a scene. So without further ado, let's get started. We're going to do some lighting. And over here in the World Properties tabs, uh, we can decrease the strength to zero. And now the entire world will be black. And that is what we want. I'm going to add an area lamp. And uh, the first thing you notice, we've got an area lamp and it's pretty much not lighting up our scene. And the reason for that is because our scale is whack. So right here, the C scale is at 1.92 meters. I don't know about you guys, but there are no cans that are approximately two meters high. So we need to put this to another scale in order for the camera to function properly as well. This will save us a lot of headaches in the future. It will make sure that the camera operates accurately and we definitely want that. What I'm going to do is I'm going over into our modeling material tab and right over here, I'm going to select one of these edges, specifically this one by pressing Alt and clicking on one of these edges and Shift S, cursor to select it. And right here for our pivot point, we are going to select the 3D cursor. And now I am simply going to scale this down until this can is a reasonable size. Now, what is a reasonable size? I've got a can right here and I've got my phone. My phone is approximately 16 and a half centimeters. I'm going to make this can 15 centimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my eye on the dimensions. By the way, if you want this tab, you can press on N and you get this tab right here in the item properties. So right here we can see the C scale and it's at 0.276 now. I'm just going to decrease it until it's at 0.15, like so. And this is now actually the proper size of our can. And I'm going to bring this up to have it sit right on top of our grid. And this makes it easier to view things in the future. Now I am going to put my selection cursor to select it, add a plane. And this is going to be our backdrop. So I'm going to increase the size of this. Oh, by the way, uh, let's have a look at uh, what the lighting did. So if I just go to my material properties right now, we can actually see that the light is working even on only 10 watt. And uh, this is what we want. So let's continue on. I'm going to make this backdrop and I'm going to increase the size on the X scale. And I'm going to make sure that it's entirely at the bottom of this can so that the can sits on the plane. Very good. So I'm going to go over to edit mode and click on this edge right here. Press E, C, and pull it upwards. Now I'm going to select this line over here, control B to bevel it, and then increase the bevel size by scrolling up on the mouse wheel. And now I'm going to shade it smooth. And as I uh, press on three, we get our backdrop and everything right over here. And I'm going to select the camera, bring it closer. So this lighting is already pretty cool if you ask me, but there's some things we can improve. So let's go over here. And I'm going to take this light, bring it a little bit closer, scale it on the Z axis. By the way, we can go away from our pivot point and set it to median point once again and have it project its light on the can somewhere around this area. And now I'm going to add another uh, area light, light area, RX90, turns it the wrong way, RX180 and go over here to the y-axis and let's have a look. Ah, that is starting to look pretty cool. We can play around with the size right here and it will make it softer or harder uh, depending on what you want. I kind of like it like this. Maybe we can place it backwards just a little bit to have it really sit on that edge, something like this. And now we're just going to play around with uh, the strength of this. Make sure that it's uh, pretty visible and all. Okay, like so. Now we've got another problem. This is not entirely centered. So I'm going over into the camera and I'm going over into the composition guides, center. And now we have our lines here to make sure that it's entirely in the center. As you can see, it is not. So I'm going to change that by pressing G on the Y axis and moving it exactly to the center. And now this is entirely in the center. Uh, I also want my passepartout 
which is right over here and I'm going to increase it to one and this makes sure that uh, everything outside of the camera is invisible. I find that this works a lot better. Now we're going to turn off our center and we're going to turn on thirds because I want to show you something. I'm going to duplicate this can and place one right over there and then place it right on this grid line and this makes sure that the composition looks nice, the rule of thirds, it's pretty common in photography and this will make sure that your render looks absolutely cool. Now I am going to change this texture, so I'm first going to copy it because I don't want to change the texture of this one. I'm just going to copy it and uh, right now we are working in a different material. Now what I want to do is I want to change the color of this black part and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to press shift A, add a mix color node plug it right in here and as you can see it does some funky stuff which I do not like but if we change the color it changes the color however it is not entirely operating the way I want it to be because it's kind of mixing with the black and you get a darker value orange I don't want that so I'm going to use this very same alpha image as the factor in this mixed color node and right now you see that everything that has white in the alpha image is showing the orange. Now we want it to be the other way around, so I'm going to plug it into B instead of A. And now I'm going to change this color. And there you go, our letters are still white, but we can change the color of our can. Now I'm going to make it into the uh, colors of my channel, which are blue and orange. You can choose whatever brand colors you like. I like orange and blue, so deal with it. And then I'm going to delete, uh, or no, copy this and place it on the other thirds, like so. I'm going to copy the texture once again. This time, I'm going to change it to blue, something like this. And it already looks pretty cool. This dark area is too dark, and I do not like that because it doesn't give us the amount of control that we would like to have in the color grading process. So what I did is I added an extra area lamp, and it's very subtle. As you can see, it doesn't do that much, but it does enough. So where it is, it is right over here. It's a very big area lamp because I wanted the light to be soft. So I in increased the size to about eight meters over here and it's 30 watts. And I placed it somewhat like with an angle towards the can. As you can see, it fills up the blacks just a little bit so that it's not too dark. This is just entirely crushed blacks. And this makes uh, sure that we have a lot more control over the final outcome in the color grading process. So that's why I did that. But for now, I find this to be looking quite cinematic, quite cool. And we can do one more thing. We can go over into our camera, go to the depth of field and select the can. Now, as you can see, these cans are being blurred out and it looks so much better. It gives it this cinematic quality that otherwise you would not have. Now, let me show you what would happen uh, if we were to select all of this. So select the plane, select this, select this and that. And then I'm going to scale it up, have it go back to two meters. What was it? Two meters, something like that. And now we do not have enough light, so I'm going to increase the world lighting just for demonstration purposes. As you can see, our bokeh effect is kind of gone. And the reason for this is because the scaling is not correct and that's why we changed the scale of the can. Because otherwise you would have to go into the camera right here and change the f-stop. Now an f-stop of 2.8 is already a very wide lens which already lets in a lot of light and makes sure that you get that cool bokeh background. There are special lenses that can go up to 1.4 or down to 1.4. But in this case, in order to get this background as blurry as we want it, you would have to set it to like 0.8 and it's just really unnatural. So if you work in the right scale, and I'm just going to control set all of that because it's rubbish. But if you work in the right scale, your camera effects and your lighting will look way better. So and that's what we want and that's what we did. So that's the thing. That's pretty much it for the lighting setup. We made a backdrop, we placed our lighting into the scene, we have made some different cans, and now we need to add our water droplets to the cans, which will make it look even better. Now that we've got our lighting setup, we can add the droplets in geometry notes. And by the way, if you enjoyed this free masterclass thus far, then click on subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.